Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to continue with our RPG game tutorial series and setting up our equipment system, and we're going to actually add the live preview of our character to the equipment. Um, now, this kind of setup that we're going to do uh, will not only just be applicable to you know this scenario, but it should give you a good idea of how to use um, you know the techniques that we're going to use, um, and specifically it's called a render target, um, but yeah, we'll get it more into that in a second. Now, first thing, just to show you where we're at, if we press play, you can hit the E button and you'll kind of see, you know, it shows up. Um, obviously there's this white image here which is going to be our character. Um, but, you know, we've got our buttons in here. Um, and if we hit I, we show our inventory. You know, we can still kind of move around. Um, if I pick something up, obviously nothing happens yet because we haven't scripted it. Um, but we will pretty shortly, so no worries. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll go out to our content browser and we're going to create a new folder. Okay, in this folder we're going to call scene uh, captures and basically um, in this folder you know we'll put our not only our our character scene capture but also if you want to do any kind of live previews of items or equipment you know you could definitely kind of use the same techniques to do that um, and I'll probably make a future tutorial on doing something like that as well but anyways um, so first things first let's right click and we are going to create a blueprint class of type actor so we'll call this BP underscore um, character recorder I guess because it's gonna record the character okay so we'll open this up and I'm gonna add a scene component called root just to get rid of this annoying little white ball okay now next what we want to add is we are going to add um, a skeletal mesh okay so this will be you know the the guy um, our character so, you know, if you're using your own characters, then, you know, obviously you just make your character the skeletal mesh. Uh, but we'll click this skeletal mesh and choose our SK mannequin. So there he is. Uh, then for Anim class, we're going to choose the third person Anim BP. Now, um, one thing to note here is that, you know, using this, it does kind of draw some resources. Um, if you don't want it to be as, um, you know, I guess resource consuming on your game, uh, you could just, you know, leave this blank and just have him in his, like, you know, A pose. Um, but I'm just going to do it for the purposes of this tutorial. So, there we have it. Next thing that we want to add is what's called a Scene Capture Component 2D. So this will be the magical little thing that actually records our, our character. And essentially what it does is it acts like a camera in that it can, you know, kind of capture something but then it can render it to what's called um, a render target or here is you know texture target um, so it is invisible so it's pretty much impossible to really tell where it's facing right now um, so what we'll do is we'll add a arrow component and we will attach this to our scene component so now the arrow will help us to you know tell which direction it's facing so it's facing that way um, we'll hit E to rotate and we'll rotate it to face um, you know us so I'm gonna move it out a little bit um, then I'm going to raise it up, I don't know, maybe right there. Um, oh, I'm moving the arrow. That's my bad. I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> don't do that. Don't move the arrow. Um, move the actual scene component. Okay. So I'm going to move this over. I don't know. That might be okay. It's really hard to tell right now, um, but we're just going to kind of put it in kind of a default position. Okay. So. Now that we've got that, next thing we need to do is create the render target so that we can actually see, you know, what our guy looks like. So we'll go back out here to scene captures. We'll right click and go to uh, materials and textures, and we'll create a render target. So I'm going to call this T underscore um, character record, or you know, you could definitely come up with a better name, but whatever. So we'll open this up. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of some of these tabs right now, just because we don't need it. Um, and you'll notice over here it asks for a size and a you know size X, size Y, so you can kind of give it a size. Um, but please note that it does have um, an impact in the game. Okay, so I'm going to set this to like 512 by 512, right? And as you increase it by a power of two, it dramatically increases the resource size. So if you were to make this like a um, a 2048 by 20, oops, 2048 texture, it starts to get you know pretty. Uh, expensive um, so try to keep it you know slow if you can or not slow but low um, and that'll help you eliminate kind of the overhead um, so 512 by 512 that might even be pushing it but we'll go with it okay 
So next we'll go to our character recorder and for the texture target, you know, with our scene capture component selected, we will choose that T underscore character record. Okay, so you can kind of see where it's looking at right now. It's, you know, looking at kind of the top of our character. If we double click it, we can actually open it and see kind of what it sees. Okay. So um, some things we'll fix to kind of get the view better. Uh, I'm going to change the field of view here to 60 and that'll kind of zoom it in a little better. Um, kind of focus more up on the character and then um, maybe we'll drop it down a little bit and that might even be too much yet 140 might work just wait for it to update now I think uh, I might give it a little rotation here just to kind of angle it down um, and as you can see it's starting to frame up a little better so maybe oops uh, if we go down just a little bit more it might work so I'm gonna tilt it back um, because we are moving in relative space, I'll drop it down and then angle it, hit compile and save. And now, if we look, it looks like it's you know framed up pretty good. So you can use these values if you want, um, but you know I definitely encourage you to play around with whatever works for you. Um, so another thing too is if you want to kind of add some light to your character, you could add like a point light back here or a spotlight that shines on them differently, and that'll kind of add some kind of cool effect as well. So anyways, now that we've done that, we'll go back to the content browser and what we need to do is take this image, okay, and we need to create a material from it. So we'll right click, go to create a material, and we'll call this M underscore or just character, uh, I guess I'll just stick with this, character record. It would probably be better to call it character capture, but whatever. Um, we'll open it up and what we're going to do right away is take our material domain here and we're going to change it to a user interface. Okay, so it's going to you know cut that down. Um, and then for the blend mode, we're going to change it to translucent. So that'll enable opacity for us, and that's important because we need that. Now we're going to take this output here and plug it into the final color. All right, so there it is. Um, but then uh, we're going to need to do something special to take away all the background. Okay, so kind of get a, get rid of the alpha. Um, so we'll go ahead and take the alpha value and we'll say, um, I think it's a 1 minus, yeah we'll do a 1 minus, plug that into opacity. So you're not going to see anything happen here, um, but later on it will be apparent what's going on. Um, okay, so we'll close that. And now the next thing that we need to do is actually place this guy in our level. Okay, so we need to place him somewhere. Um, otherwise the capture will never really, um, at least it won't really update live in the game. Okay, because we're going to be attaching weapons to him, so we need to make sure he's in the game. So what we'll do for this is we'll select our sky sphere, and we're going to hit F, and that'll propel us way out into space. So this is just you know nothingness out here. Um, all this light is actually not light at all; it's just kind of there in the engine, um, just so things aren't completely black. Um, so what we'll do then is we'll just take our character, drag him in, okay. And we'll just make sure that he's facing, you know, completely, you know, not um, aligned with the uh, uh, the big sky sphere. So to do that, I'm gonna like set this to maybe zero. Um, where'd he go? Okay, maybe I didn't want to set him to zero. Um, set you to zero, maybe. Now wherever he is, let's hit F and go find him. Okay. So now we know that he's lined up, like kind of perpendicular, so that the light will be shining directly at him. Um, then we'll hit 0 on the Z, drop him down, go find him again by hitting F. And now here he is. Okay, so if we look at our character record, okay, you'll see this is what it's updating to. Okay, but now, thanks to what we did with the material, um, it's going to factor out that alpha and still kind of give it a, a shading and kind of a nice look. Okay. So next what we'll do is we'll go back to the uh, UI equipment. Okay, and we'll find this character image and make it visible so we can see it. And all we're going to do for the image is go here and we're going to type in M underscore character record. And so just like that, we've got our live preview showing up. So if we press play now, I can hit E and you see there he is. He's got his live preview going and that's awesome. So there we go. So that's all we're going to do for this video. Um, I hope you found this helpful and, you know, maybe you can apply it to other things in your game. Uh, but with that, thank you for watching. And if you liked the video, like or subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.